What game's ending forces you to kill yourself for no reason? What game's ending is actually just another beginning? From dream endings to incomprehensible ones, here are 10 of the most controversial endings in video games. I'm Danger Dolan, and today I will be your narrator. Number 10. The beginning of Metal Gear Solid 2 fooled everyone with the infamous bait and switch that has you begin the game in Solid Snake and then switches you over to the new kid Raiden. But the ending reveals a twist on the it was all just a dream cliche, the events of the game are a simulation, meant to see if a soldier could rise to the legendary status of Solid Snake by going through a similar ordeal as the Shadow Moses incident from the first game. It also has a very lengthy speech about information technology and uh, control and, and political stuff. I don't want to spoil it, it's great, you should go play it. Number 9. Arkham Asylum will long be remembered as one of the best licensed character games of all time. And at the center of the whole story is the Joker. He seems to always be a step and a half ahead of you. But once you manage to catch up to the Joker in your battle of wits, you've built up to a great boss fight. What you get instead is a fight with a Joker Hulk. Joker takes a bunch of Bane juice and just tries to outmuscle Batman, which is basically the least Joker thing imaginable. Number 8. Any game in the Half-Life series could take some flack for being too obsessed with cliffhangers, but like, the thing about a cliffhanger is that there's only so long you can keep people on that cliff. Up until Half-Life Episode 2, every cliffhanger ending had a legitimate conclusion. But Episode 2 ends on arguably the highest cliff yet, and there's no indication from Valve that any closure is coming. Ever. It's over. You lose. Good day, sir. Number 7. The Last of Us, the adventures of Joel and Ellie through a post-apocalyptic zombie hellscape was full of a number of morally grey choices. But generally speaking, the two of them tried to do generally the right thing throughout the whole game. Until Joel made up his mind to, spoilers, save Ellie by murdering a bunch of the people working to cure the zombie virus. The bittersweet ending left a lot of people wondering if that problem could have been resolved without the whole murdering everyone in the building thing. Number 6. Fallout 3's final decision, which is intended to be a climactic and meaningful thing, feels a bit forced. The decision is effectively set up to be a big self-sacrifice moment in which the lone wanderer sacrifices himself to provide clean water to millions of people. To do that, they must enter a chamber full of extreme radiation and enter a code. The only problem is, many players have a follower named Fox next to him. Fox is a super mutant, and therefore 100% immune to radiation. But it wasn't until a patch that comes with DLC that the game gives you the option of send in the only person who can't be killed by radiation into the chamber. Number 5. Super Mario Bros. 2. The good news is, in the 1980s, people didn't play video games for a 20 minute cinematic at the end. It was pretty standard practice for games to give you a quick congratulations and a snippet of broken English, but Super Mario Bros. 2 wanted to give us a real ending, and in doing so made it even more frustrating than if it just said, a winner is you. Mario 2 was all just a dream. During the credit sequence, you get Mario's sleeping face dreaming up all the things that happened. Maybe this is something to do with the fact that SMB2 is a Japanese game called Doki Doki Panic, which has nothing to do with the Mario franchise, so they needed to make sure it didn't stay canon. But it gave us Shy Guys, and that's cool. Number 4. You know what the problem is with closing out a trilogy of massively successful sci fi adventures with branching paths and stories? It's just that a three game series with multiple paths and side stories should. Maybe have a bunch of different endings to connect those branching paths. That's not what Mass Effect 3 wanted to do. Now Mass Effect 3 offered four endings. Three of them identical to each other. Turns out the best way they figured out to wrap up the loose ends in a galaxy-wide storyline is to just alt F4 the whole galaxy. Bravo. Number three. Bioshock is a classic case of a game that peaked too early. The death of Andrew Ryan and the reveal of Fontaine and Atlas go down as one of the most memorable moments in video game history. And if that had been the moment the game was leading up to, few would have complained. It's an incredible climax. Unfortunately, it is the game's climax, and once you've finished with it, you're left with several more hours of game for some reason, followed by a mostly forgettable final boss fight. It reminds me of Final Fantasy IX, where a fucking... Angel thing pops out of nowhere to say, Hey, I'm the real bad guy, even though it's, there's absolutely no precedence for it. Thanks, thanks, Final Fantasy IX, you're great. Number two. Ghost and Goblins is a platformer famous more for its level of difficulty than anything else. Most players struggle to get through even the first stage, much less all six. But Ghost and Goblins isn't content to force you through its challenge run just one time, oh no. Your reward for going through the game the first time is to get sent back to the beginning of the game and play on a harder difficulty. 
It's not like you beat the game and it's just looping you through again. There's no princess to be saved. So why? Because as the game tells you, this room is an illusion and is a trap devised by Satan. In other words, your entire first playthrough is a dream. Number one. One of the most controversial and upsetting video game endings in recent years belongs to No Man's Sky. The game neglected to actually include an ending. While No Man's Sky has improved drastically since its release, the original game was pretty much a mindless scramble for resources in an attempt to reach the center of the universe. It didn't take too long for most people to achieve that goal. And what was waiting for them? Basically the exact same thing that was waiting in Ghosts and Goblins, a free ticket back to the beginning. You sent back to another remote planet to work your way through towards the middle once again. But unlike Ghosts and Goblins, there was never a true ending waiting for you. That was it. That was the whole game. What? Danger Dawn, did you know that we have a countdown book featuring some of our best scripts on sale now? Links down below for the physical and ebook versions. That is it for this countdown. Have a good one!